everybody. It's Michelle here with Angel Souls and this is our weekly angelic message. We're going to be getting into some pretty heavy topics. I will save some of the heaviest stuff for a separate video. That way you can decide if you want to look at it or not. It's not going to be terrible, but you know, just thought we would give a little bit of a taste of what we're talking about for this week here along with the cards and then the rest of it in another video. Now, if you would like to get a personal reading with me, just go to my website angelsouls444.com. If you are seeing this before September 26, please join me live on the Bright platform as we talk about portals and vortexes or vortices. Both ways would be correct to say it. We're going to be talking about what the various types are, how they can affect us, and how it's going to be affecting the world. Now, obviously, there are so many things happening. We are seeing a severe turnaround um, in, in a lot of different areas. And as I record this, we have, I think it's Hurricane Ian that might be, we still don't know where it's gonna exactly hit, again, as of the recording of this. But if you are in the path of the storm, let us know if you need some support. Uh, of course, we're here for you in that way. And um, everything else that's happening around the world. And I'm so sorry, you know what I'm talking about. Please know I stand with you 100%. We just have to be careful about what we say or we get blocked. Okay, so there is that. I know I won't be able to speak any more openly in the other video, but what I will talk about here would be us being uh, or seeing the effects and have been for forever, seeing the effects of spiritual warfare. Now, if this is a weird concept to you, that's okay. You can call it whatever you want, but it is interesting that seemingly good people are now starting to act out or now that some injustices are being talked about you know they've always been there they've always been at the surface but people weren't allowed to and still aren't allowed to speak out about it um but people are acting like how dare you say that to me or you know what do you mean that's not normal of course it's normal to you know take advantage of people or of course it's fine for me to treat you this way or whatever okay of course you have to look this way to get this group's approval and you know this is how you're supposed to live we are going to be having some very deep personal changes that are happening now for each individual obviously this is a general reading and we'll get some general energies from the cards here when i pull those but the the thing that's going on here is that we are going to have our way of life stripped from us and i will go into this a little bit more in the other video about karma about spiritual lessons what we might be seeing around that and i i've been waiting to do this video because there was so much that was coming up but one of the things that I kept hearing was orphaned souls. I'm actually going to be writing a piece about that. And I'll have it over at Substack. And yes, I'm finishing up some more of that novel. <laughs> I'm getting there and doing a lot of things right now, but I'll be getting that done too. But this idea of orphaned souls. Now, depending on your belief system, um, you, that might take on, you know, different meanings for you. But when I was asking, tuning in and asking, why do people behave the way that they do? What is this? There's something very strange about people um, thinking it's funny that they are being um, aggravating or thinking it's funny that they've harmed another or thinking it's funny when someone is scared of them. What is that? What is going on here? And in my opinion, and merely just my opinion, I think people are acting more and more sociopathic than ever. I've never seen the likes of it. It, it. And even people who I've always thought, you know, they're, they're nice, they're good people, even they're taking on some of these traits and being manipulative or conniving or judgmental or backstabbing. And, you know, all of these things are occurring. And when I tuned in about this, this was the answer. You are of a sort of orphaned soul, not just meaning me, but mankind. And there is much more there than we could ever comprehend at this time. And if we were given the information, first of all, we wouldn't believe it. We've been given information 
for a very long time and people just tune it out. But even if we were to take it in, we don't have the context within this matrix to understand it. So we're given things in symbols. Obviously, I've talked about this before. We're given things in symbols. And the reasoning that I was given for why people are sort of short circuiting, as I say, is this idea of trying to reach home. Home is the self. And feeling like there's a piece of us that is, is long gone and long forgotten. In reality, it's not us actually being orphaned. It is a great force, a great collection of energy that has come in and has consistently separated us from source, ourselves, having us believe that we have to, you know, watch out for being sick, watch out for, you know, getting older, watch out for losing your job, watch out if you don't make enough money, you know, watch out about the housing market. All of these things, and yes, we are in the chosen game. And so those are things that we have to pay attention to. But if we can get to that point of realizing we never have been orphaned, we always have that connection there. We have just been silenced or separated uh, in, in our perception from it, but that doesn't make it true. So more than ever, there is a need for every single one of us when something is going on in our lives, yes, you have to handle it, okay? But remember, as Louise Hay would always say, as one of her many affirmations, all is well. All is well. This is a, a game construct, and we are in the middle of it. So how do we get ourselves into that place of being able to have that understanding in the moment, especially if it's a highly emotionally charged moment? Raise the frequency. How do you do that? Well, I have resources. I've been putting out just simplistic, uh, you know, music and beautiful imagery, meditation music. So the sound frequency can help, um, you know, raise, raise up your energy, uh, repair your energy field, uh, bring in beings and angels. And, you know, again, however you see that messengers, guardians uh, to come in and, and help you feel at ease. Now, there is this sort of, I'm even getting the message now that most of us don't know what peace feels like. We don't know what it feels like. We think we do. We think we've got a hold of it. And, you know, maybe that is, oh, I just had a really pleasant day. This is the kind of deeper peace of remembering that none of this is actually real. That everything is ha that's happening, it doesn't mean that we are powerless within it. And it doesn't mean that we can't actually create the things that we want in our lives. The thing is, most of us humans are in a place where we're going after things that we've been trained to want. Most of you aren't going to get that. And that's not me making that up. I just got that feeling. Because I can feel your energies bouncing back. <laughs> All right? Even, even though I've recorded this at a different time and space, I can feel it. So... I do hope you will listen to that. I do hope that you will allow yourselves to relax into this piece. Don't be go, go, go all the time. Don't be so, um, you know, I don't want to say don't be ambitious. I'm an ambitious person too, but don't let it take a toxic toll on your life. All right. Now I'll go more into this in the other video, but let's get some cards here. I brought over two Oracle decks. I'm just doing Oracle here. Okay, here's one. Spread your wings. It's Archangel Ariel. So Ariel is associated with nature, uh, nature angels. If you think of like fairies, if you if that's what you call them, you know. But we, I would refer to them as nature angels. Um, being grounded. Sandalfin has the same kind of energy. And this says, do not hold back right now. The timing is perfect, and you are ready to soar. What we're trying to get across to everybody who's watching this: do not take these messages at face value. It doesn't just mean spread your wings and go after that promotion. Because when some of the things that are about to erupt in this world happen, you will be the first ones putting this panicked, horrific energy out into the collective and we don't need it. 
nor do we need people making excuses for bad behavior, defending people who, yes, they've been hurt on a very deep level, but they've made a choice as an adult to take advantage of others and to take that, their sadness, their hurt and pain out on someone else. This spread your wings is asking you to do everything you can to enter out of this uh, third dimensional energy field. Bring yourself, when we say a higher frequency, it doesn't necessarily, let's try, it's a very human way to think like, well, higher is better, right? If you are where you are, that's fine. But if you can, bring yourself on up and allow yourself to get into what we often refer to as the higher self. Now, the higher self that we would be most familiar with would be the fifth dimensional self. This is called the angelic self. I'll be doing a whole thing on that, a whole live about the angelic self and what some of the misconceptions are as far as the information has come through me. <laughs> Just understand that. But we, you know, we extend beyond that. We go all the way up into the higher dimensions. As you might know, we all are one. And so th- we are fractal beings. There are, th- we are pieces of ourselves. When I do a reading for someone and they want an Akashic Records reading, speaking of portals, there you go. I'm going into a portal <laughs> to get into a vortex of information. And um, often I'm shown for a client whatever bit, sliver, iteration, however you want to see that, that most pertains to this timeline. So it might show up like a whole separate lifetime, but that's for our understanding. I don't have a full understanding of how all that is. I just know how the information is presented. So often, you know, something will play out a vignette of sorts. Not everybody is the same. Sometimes it's just words or, you know, something along those lines. But whatever lesson that you're trying to learn here that you're getting stuck on, will be able to see this other part of you. And if nothing else in that sort of reading, you're, you're collecting up another bit of you, right? And so just that alone can help open up your energy field, your, your cells, any codes that are contained within those cells, anything um, that gets you into full power, right? That starts to open up and Hopefully clients, you know, unless they let their ego snap back down and they're trying to intellectualize everything. But if you allow yourself to raise up with that, um, with that extra bit of energy, then things will be clear to you. You'll know how to carry on. And the big thing that they're trying to come through and get us to understand is that getting through this life and being a part of this world does not require the steps that we've been trained to think. It it has nothing to do with that. It has nothing to do with, we see oftentimes people, um, you know, they're usually covert narcissists who try to make other people feel bad if they have an emotion, right? Or if they get upset about something or um, if they want to express themselves, you know, just because you're not comfortable with that doesn't make the other person wrong for saying it. There's a whole lot of wanting to control one another. And when we start going down that path, again, we're putting this energy out into the collective, getting separated even further from our true soul self. And what happens there? Again, the conditioning. Now you're going after, okay, I have to figure out this situation at work because that coworker, I cannot tell you how many times people will get readings because they want to talk about somebody else. And they don't think to come in and ask, what can I do, right? And I'm not saying take on the blame, right? I'm somebody who's been through quite a bit of that type of stuff, like the gaslighting and all that, the scapegoat. I had to take on a lot of stuff just to make peace. So I understand how hurtful that can be to say, well, you need to take your accountability. That is such a flat, generic statement. It does not take every situation into account, However, if you, let's say you're coming into your spiritual practice and you're really serious about it, you're not choosing spirituality um, as just something to help you feel inspired, which there's nothing wrong with that. But if that's the only reason why you're here, you're not doing, you're not pulling your weight as a soul. 
And I'm not kidding when I say we need all hands on deck right now. You don't know how close we are to absolute disaster. And that is not fear mongering. Don't even try me. You want to see a perfect example of a spiritual warfare? Trolls. Trolls. People. <laughs> People who are normally nice. And then they hear something they don't like and they've got to boss, every, you know, boss around, control, do all this stuff, pass judgment, uh, be diminishing. I just tried to have a conversation with someone today, a guy, and uh, he started getting mouthy with me. And he started taking on this like toxic masculinity BS. And I'm just looking at him like, yeah, with this face, like, what? why are you talking to me like that? <laughs> In this day and age, have you not been paying attention? No. So... The, what I'm getting at here, though, is that the very things, when you come here and you listen to these messages and you you want to just get your little hit of energy, that's going to come back on you. But if you come in here because you want real connection, you want to be a part of a community, you want to, um, you know, just this is why we're here to reflect back to each other. So maybe when you walk away, something that you realize you want to work on within yourself um, something you're ready to heal, you know, wh whatever it is. But you walk away with a little bit of a game plan here to, you know, better yourself, to keep raising your frequency. I do the same thing. I do, I do that all the time. We have fallen so flat. I want to, you know, I didn't want to come out here and start like really... What really needs to be said, <laughs> I want to say, but I, I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. Now, you might say, Michelle, that doesn't sound like you. You're usually pretty blunt. I'm not blunt. I'm just, I'm not. That's just people's response to someone actually uh, setting boundaries and speaking their truth. That's how uncomfortable people are with it, that they will say, you're blunt. And um, I think... We have to lay this down, whether it makes you roll your eyes or not. I can't really care about it. If I were a man sitting here saying it, ask yourself. Women are expected to show up and be motherly and kind and nurturing and maybe even submissive, right? So it, it's jarring to people when someone shows up and doesn't do as you expect. I've taken a lot for just being straightforward <laughs> and I'm not victimizing myself I want to lay that down as another thing to ponder why would that be why would that be your way through is not by just thinking of yourself it is not by just trying to be more important than anybody else to have the fanciest life to show off as much as you can if you like pretty things I like pretty things that's one thing okay but if you're getting the pretty things because you need status, watch. Oh my gosh, you want a warning? Here it is, okay? <laughs> if you are into status chasing, if you have been so... My table is all creaky crunchy, I don't know why. Um, if you are so <laughs> into uh, making sure you are perceived a certain way in your life, in short, you're kind of... What did I just do to my hair? In short, you're kind of narcissistic. Not only are you going to be experiencing personal disasters, and I'm putting it that way because a lot of you are dramatic, okay? Most of us go through that stuff and you're like, oh, that was stinky. Okay, well, I'll handle it. Blah, blah, blah. People who think that everything should be handed to them or like they're more special or more important and their problems are worth more than anybody else, they can't handle nothing, okay? They think everyone is their servant. So you're going to have a bad time, okay? For real, you're going to have a bad time. But here's where you karmically, let me say energetically, let's take the word karma out of it. This is where you energetically have no right to do that. Why? Because when you start, again, going into a panic perhaps, or let's call it a fit, you're putting that energy out into the universe. You're putting that out into the collective. You're affecting us all. Watch how a damaged ego could end all of us. Watch how damaged egos cost lives. There is a force that has been laid upon us 
that is dark, heavy, it's suffocating us, it is grooming us, it is brainwashing us, has been. And even for any person who considers themselves a spiritual person, you say, well, no, 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 no. I live in the woods by myself. I'm good. You still carry the energy of your ancestors. I've done ancestral healing. Okay. Okay, cool. But, <laughs> but you're still carrying something. There's a reason why you had to run off into the woods. There's a reason why you don't want to be around people. Why is that? If you were really healed, you could have that same measure of peace while in the middle of a crowded, busy city. You feel me? I don't know if I need the other video now. <laughs> now, now that I've said all this, okay, maybe. All right, so the next card we have is sensitivity. So this is something that is coming up. This is why people are acting out. Sensitivity, yes, can be your superpower for sure. Um, but when somebody isn't used to being sensitive, when they're just used to, you know, having to be tough or having to win or, you know, all of those very toxic things. Um, sorry, I'm getting distracted here by Hanio. Hanio and I'm recording this on a new moon. Hanio is associated with the moon. So this is this idea of a fresh start. But what I was saying is if people are not used to being sensitive, they're going to be the biggest fools yelling out in the street because they can't handle anything, right? Like, what's this feeling thing that I've got going on? Why? <laughs> All right, you are extra sensitive to energies and emotions right now. Honor yourself and your feelings. This is really talking about um, upcoming events. And I have been saying since the beginning of this year, this fall is going to be crazy. It already has been. Think about everything, everything that's going on. Okay? Shoot. I think I'm psychic. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Let's see. All right. Courage. This is what we need right now. We need to be grounded and we need to be courageous. This is Archangel Ariel. So pay attention, especially with my readings that I do, pay attention to the angels that come up. You can meditate with them. Again, check out my channel. I have a whole playlist called Meditation. So you can just do the music if you want. Um, I have a couple of guided meditations on there as well. This says be courageous and stand up for your beliefs. Now, this does not mean I believe that I'm right and I believe that you're wrong. And I'm going to stand up for the fact that I believe that I'm right and I believe that you are wrong. That is not what we're doing. That is not a game any of us are going to win. This means have the courage. I, I'm shaking as I say this. I know, right? Like this is just intense. But um, have the courage to face the things that you've been extra sensitive about. Okay. This example is coming up. If you're somebody who jokes about the childhood trauma that you have dealt with, and we see people do that. It's a coping mechanism. That's why I crack jokes all the time. But some people take it to the point where it's a cry for help. Let's get better at not just laughing that off and laughing with them. You know, even if you have to, in private, another time, be like, hey, so you're making that joke. What was that about? Okay. So. Clear sentience. So be aware of what you're feeling. This is Archangel Raguel. This is, Raguel is all about playing nice with others. Right. And having peace with others. And remembering that it's not just your energy that matters. This whole thing where people are like, I can do whatever I want. Um, no, no. And then if you're, you know, saying, hey, you can't, oh, you're somebody who's too controlling, you're too this, you're too that. If what you are trying to do is harming anybody, you don't have a right to do it. If what you are doing harms yourself, you really don't have a right to do it because you're messing with all of us. And you're definitely messing with the people who love you, who know you and love you. Okay, like I'm talking about the people closest to you. But, you know, when your life is interfering with other people's existence... You don't have the right to do that. You don't have the right to interfere with someone else's free will. So the, this clear sentence says, notice your recurring physical and emotional feelings as they signify divine guidance. 
This can only occur when you are putting the work in to make sure you are energetically clear. This has nothing to do with ego. This has nothing to do with um, what most of us see when you go to any sort of spiritual anything. You know, people treating spirituality like it's some sort of competition. Oh, well, I did this. I did that. I always know somebody is not on the up and up when they start giving their credentials, right? And I I get it because, you know, some of us, it's expected in our business to give our credentials. Like when I started doing this professionally, people wanted to know who certified me and all that stuff. But (laughs) I didn't have a certification. I didn't. Um, I, I had been able to do this since I was a small child. I just always hit it. Um, but yeah, I mean, when people are going around and saying like, oh, I spent three years in an ashram or I spent three years studying with this person or that person, eh, (laughs) you either got it or you don't. You're either doing the work or you're not. That's all it comes down to. Oh, interesting. Okay. Before I read this, this feels like the army on the other side. And I want to say that, okay? Army on the other side. Opal, your children on earth and in heaven are happy and well cared for by God and the angels. This, um, I'm getting chills as I say this. We're, okay, so kids are obviously in huge trouble. I was a child in the 80s. And I've said this in other videos where that was the face on the milk carton generation. And... Now we're starting to discover where those kids were going and it's still happening. Now there's that part of it. The other part of this is that, yeah, this is a little heavy. There are kids that are, there are kids that are, these children that are being born in, they are the ones that are bringing more healing Do not do this. If you are a parent of one of these children, do not raise them to think that they're here to save the world. We did that with the millennials. Remember the indigos, crystal rainbow children? And next thing you know, we either see unbearable egos walking around going, I'm an indigo. Shut up. Like, I said it. Shut up. Gross. Or... We had, (laughs) or we had people, and more often than not, we had this generation of people feeling like the weight of the world was on their shoulders, and that is not okay. That is not okay. So please do not put that pressure on the kids being born in now, but just know they're showing up to, uh, I don't know what the, they're course correcting. Every generation's had some bit of doing that, but um, this is definitely saying the kids, the kids are on their way. (laughs) Kids are on their way here. In victory, we will have a good outcome. But we have to stop the nonsense. I can't tell you how many times my heart has been broken because I started to open up to somebody and then I realized they're just like everybody else. They're off for themselves. They're not really committed to having a connection with anybody. And then I, just for me personally, I go, you know what? It's, it's not the worst thing to be on my own. I would rather be on my own, then deal with this. Because I could do much, I'm much more productive when no one's bothering me. (laughs) I think it's most of us, right? But but when we actually start doing this work and opening our eyes to our own behaviors, um, to the energy we're putting out into the collective, that's very important. Make sure we're doing real spiritual practice, okay? What does that look like? It looks like facing your wounds. It looks like facing your healing. You could take any approach you want. It doesn't matter. Make sure your frequency is high. When we say make sure your frequency is high, it doesn't mean I want to be high so I can look down on everybody. You failed. This says, it's Archangel Sandalfin. Your prayers have been heard and answered. Have faith. So as things get scarier, and they will, There was something that was supposed to happen yesterday. But it didn't. If you don't know what date I'm talking about, whatever, don't worry about it. Something was supposed to happen yesterday. But it was stopped. 
we were helped, okay? Now, that is because, in part, we in the collective said, no, we don't want this. No, this is not interesting. No, we're not going to be reckless. No. But there are also beings, whether you believe it or not, do whatever you want with it, I don't care. There are also other beings who are in this spiritual warfare, who are making sure that things do not come to pass. I'm going to leave it here. Please remember to join me tomorrow night. We've got a little friend in here who's flying around. <laughs> Please join me tomorrow night for the live on the portals and vortex uh, discussion because this is going to play into some of this messaging that we were getting here. And of course, if you want a personal reading with me, we can look at you know, where you get hung up on um, or stuck in your spiritual practice because that's really what I do. It's more about being like the spiritual coach um, to help reflect back, to tap into your energy, bring messages through that maybe you're not hearing for yourself uh, so that you can have real spiritual growth. It's not, tell me how special I am. I'm angry at this person. Tell me what they're thinking. Tell me how to stop it. Yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but, no, no, that's not me. It's the other thing people do. You finally give them the message and they reject it. We've never seen the things that are going to be happening. We've never seen them before. We have no context for them. We can no longer put off our spiritual growth. We can no longer keep staying behind and waiting for something to shove us in the direction that we need to go in. We need to do that for ourselves. All right, so catch me on the other video here. I'm going to go, I, I don't know how much more I'm going to go into, it, but I just feel like we should talk about um, some other things in that video. So thank you for being here, especially if you made it through all the way to the end. Thank you for commenting, liking, sharing, subscribing. What that does is that tells the platform that people like my content uh, and then they start suggesting it more. Okay, and when we do that, we can get the message out. We can have a discussion, unless it's really triggering people and they want to be trolls. I don't know, but um, yeah, thank you for being here. I'm sending you my love and take care. <laughs>